The conventional answer is they can expect to see six decades, many more than a hundred great works by Matisse, you know, one of the most loved um, painters of the 20th century. Um, but maybe a more interesting answer is they can expect to see um, anxiety, colour, arabesques, purple, green, breathing space, floating, soulfulness, uplift. Yeah, so I'm, the long story through the uh, career is um, a rich one to follow, uh, but the works individually are so beguiling and as they've come out of their crates, there's that lovely moment of, of, of intimacy, you know, when you reconnect not with the kind of iconic image that exists in your mind, but with the thing that he made. And he was such a maker, you know, he's such a, a studio worker. And he was relentlessly self-critical, you know, for, you know, what, is, what has been really apparent to me in a way that I, I, I hadn't quite clocked before doing the show, is that this artist who spoke so often about wanting lightness and joyousness in his work, you know, went to great pains to achieve that. You know, there is all of that revision and self-criticism and, and hard work and abandonment and erasure and letting go and reinvention yeah. that's needed to get you to that place of lightness and joyousness, you know. So it's a, it's a great reminder. You've got, th those aren't trivial things, you know, a quality of playfulness and uplift and, mm. and, and, and directness and almost childlike simplicity, which we, of course, see in these beautiful studies for the Vance Chapel. Um, those are not uh, those are not things that necessarily come easily. You have to prepare for them, um, and uh, you've got to do the hard yards before mm. they will come to you in the right way. Yeah. Well, can I take you back to his early days? Mm. Because a lot of painters, as you would know, are very interested in colour, um, and obviously that's something that's gone through his whole life. But mm. can we go back to the Fauvist period? Was there a couple in there that I yeah, saw? Yeah, yeah, there are several amazing um, paintings from the Fauvist moment, and, and just as interestingly, there are works that bracket that moment. So there is a wonderful early painting called The Reader, which is very much influenced by Corot, has a, a dark, almost gravy brown palette. And then, of course, you just swing your eyes around the room and you can see uh, in a painting from Balliol that he has met, you know, the Australian Impressionist John Russell and that heat and light and glare and intensity has started to come into the palette. Um, the show does begin with that lovely anecdote about Matisse um, in his early 20s when he's convalescing and his mother gave him a box of paints and he, and, he, and he said that, you know, from that moment onwards, his direction was set and he... And he he went to painting as an animal rushes towards something that he loves. Mm. Well, we're at the moment, we're in this spectacular space, mm. uh, which is evoking the Chapel of the Rosary in Vance, which he created. Mm. Usually, to go to the Chapel at Vance, you have to get all the way to the south of France and then travel inland to the small village and you visit that space that Matisse called the Sacred Shoebox, you know, very unprepossessing building from outside. And he, in a way, kept its dimensions deliberately modest, but then you step inside and you're in this, um, uh, you've really stepped inside a Matisse artwork. He made the windows, he made the, the murals on the walls, he made the vestments that the Dominican um, brothers and priests wore. He called it the culmination of his, of his life's work. And amazingly, we've been able to reconstitute, as you put it, an, an evocation of the space. It's not a replication of the space. What you're seeing is the second set of studies for the chapel. And in fact, he wasn't able to realise these very ebullient um, designs because of the complexity of the forms. It was tricky to make them happen in stained glass. But we're so happy to have them here. And what's wonderful about this particular study for the, the two big windows that stand behind the altar is that these forms, these wonderful, almost like hand-like forms, which rise up, are of course derived from his 1930 trip to Tahiti. They are lagoon leaves, you know. So here, in a Dominican Catholic chapel in the south of France, this image of exaltation and resurrection um, is being articulated through forms from, from our part of the world. What the presentation here also draws out is that the chapel is part of that great tradition of, of, of painter-designed chapels that you have in the 20th century. You think of Stanley Spencer's chapel at Berkeley, you think of the Rothko chapel. They are these spaces where someone of faith can come in and see one thing, and someone who is not faithful but who only believes in art can come and see something different. So that, I think that is a live tension and one that makes the experience of this room all the more um, 
powerful. Yeah. But, you know, Matisse, when he made these works, was uh, an old man, you know, and he was nearing the end of the most extraordinary second life as an artist. In, in 1941, he'd been rushed to hospital. Uh, he had duodenal cancer. There was a very um, traumatic operation that he underwent. And he came very close to death. And when he was recovering in the hotel room, he had a, a dream of being sunk in a tomb-like space with no, no light coming in. And I do like to think of this room and the chapel itself as the kind of counterpoint to that, because he came back. He, he referred to himself as a, a resurrection or a resuscitation and embarked on this incredible second life. And it was a, a moment of, not of heaviness, you know, it's not like Goyer, it's not like Philip Guston, it's not like Rembrandt, where the late work has the sense of gravity and weightedness to it. It's a moment of letting go. And mm -hmm. he said that that experience, which of course uh, he turned to because he was unwell, uh, you know, he was working mostly from his bed or his wheelchair, that experience of guiding the tailor's shears through the, the gouache painted sheets of paper, he said it gave him the sensation of flying. You know, the, the feeling yeah, of right. just being able to carve shapes so mm. easily from colour. Um, mm. A very kind of pure and distilled form of activity. And I think it's a very affecting moment in, in his career mm. because, you know, he could never have predicted that that would be the place he would end up. You know, I think as with many uh, of the great kind of innovations or epiphany moments that kick in an artist's careers, um, the artist can only get ready to receive the gift when it comes to them. You know, you've got to prepare to receive that insight, but you can't, you can't hurry it into being. Mm. And Matisse just happened to be in the right place for this, for this moment of liftoff to, yeah. to occur.